Okay, so we've got Seb here working really well through Skillist online lessons while we're locked down in the UK. And let's have a look at what he's doing well. So left-hand side was from a previous lesson. And last time we've done a lot of work on that initial move in the back swing, so looking pretty good. It then gets a little bit long and then a bit steep on the way down. And although I prefer the posture slightly on the left-hand side, as he steepens the club, he has to early extend the hips, which is pushing the hips towards the ball. As he does that, his head comes up away from the ball, loses posture, and the strike's not quite there. On the right-hand side, mainly because the backswing's a little bit neater, and also he's done a lot of work in transition, in improving the quality of the turn. He maintains his posture better through the ball. The strike starts to improve. It's a lot more consistent as well. So let's have a look at how he's doing that. So... Left hand side, first of all, was, you know, decent setup, good first move. You see him having a little sneaky look back to check he's on the right track there while he's doing that drill, leaving that shot. But as he gets to the top of the swing, he'll tend to go a little bit long. I'm exaggerating the cross the line. Then from there, it was pulled down and steep. Again, I'm exaggerating. But to get from here, you wouldn't want to turn, like I've said in a previous video, because you're just going to smother the ball, smash it left. You go like this. And as you early extend, it helps the club fall behind you and you've got a chance of getting the ball somewhere to the target with maybe a mixed strike. So what he's done really well is in the backswing, rather than get to here and carry on going with the arms, he's managed to control the length of his swing a lot better. To do that, if you go up against the wall, so your left foot maybe a grips length away from the wall, take your setup, go top of your swing and go slow if you're someone that over swings with the arms because this wall here is going to sneak up on you pretty quickly. So that'd be the top of your swing. The length of your back swing or a full swing is not really defined by where the club goes because you'll see players on tour here, 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 wherever, but they're all going to be turned 90 or a bit more. So as long as you turn around as far as you can with some quality, what you do with the club won't define the full swing. It's the amount of turn. So Seb's turning well, and now the club's under control. So what he can do, rather than being long and across the line, now he's here, it's easier to get the club in this position. So he's had to do a bit of work on this rotation as well and keeping his posture. So rather than going here, early extending, he's now in a better position and he can turn through, keep his posture. But to help him keep his posture, I've done that a couple of ways. If you've got belt loops on, through your belt loops, stick on your shoulders here. Now when you turn, assume the club's good, if you can get these two sticks to meet as you get towards the golf ball, that's a good exaggeration of what we're looking for. If you're someone that early extends, they're not touching. If you can keep left hip back, right shoulder down, they're going to get close and tap in the middle. So that's what we're looking for in the downswing. You can also preset impact, and that would be left hip back, right shoulder down. As I do that, I'm shifting or leaning the shaft forward. So it's left hip back, right shoulder down to help me turn. And if you want to from there, like he's done a few times, is start there, little rewind. And then can you turn through, get into that same position? But pulling the hip back as the shoulder comes down, big move to keep your posture, assuming you've got the club in a decent position on the way here. Otherwise, you're not going to want to do this. <laughs>